Uh, good morning, grade 12. You are here uh, watching Mr. Kevin Jacob from the Butler City Municipal University. I am here to present a lesson for you guys on accounting paper one, which you guys will be writing next week. I will just give you guys a broad overview and tips how to tackle the question paper to make sure that you score the maximum mark in the coming exam for accounting paper one, okay? The overview of the paper is as follows. For paper one, question one, normally the question that is assessed in question one or being asked for you to answer is financial statements, notes to financial statements, and the range of the marks normally there is between 50 to 60 marks. Question two will be cash flow statements, financial indicators, notes to financial statements, and the range of the marks is between 30 and 45 marks. Question three covers analysis and interpretation of financial statements. The range of those questions are between 35 and 45 marks. And the last question will then cover corporate governance and audit reports for a total of 15 marks. Please also on the YouTube channel ensure that you do interact with us indicate to us where you're from, which district, which school, if you have any questions you might have regarding my presentation or regarding a topic specifically in paper one, do not hesitate to ask on the comments. I will make sure I get back to you as soon as possible. When we delve deeper into paper one, specifically question one, the following topics are asked in general in, in question one. The first question tends to be statement of comprehensive income. Second one, statement of financial position. Third one, the correction of net profit. Notes to the financial statements. Financial indicators. Inventory valuation. The WHERE method, FIFO method. Specific identification method and fixed assets. I will go more deeply into these questions. Remember, they will not ask you all of these questions at the same time in question one. They will give you a mixture of the questions. For example, if they, if they ask you the statement of comprehensive income, previously known as the income statement, it might be a full income statement, then they might give you also a full statement of financial position. Or it can be a full statement of comprehensive income with a section of the statement of financial position, such as the asset section or the equity and liability section or just the liability section. Also, they might ask you the correction of net profit with the statement of financial position. And then when it comes to the indicators here, very important, you will notice that in some exams, they will ask, they will give it to you as an adjustment where you will be required to use the final answer of that indicator to be able to get figures in the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income, as well as the statement of financial position. For example, if they give you the current basis, you use that current basis final answer to either de determine the current asset or the current liability of the statement of financial position, okay? Also, when it comes to the inventory valuation method here, you will see I've given the acronyms here for them. WEM stands for the weighted average method, FIFO stands for first in, first out, and SIM stands for the specific identification method. Now, when it comes to the inventory valuation, they might ask you to calculate missing stock uh, as a value or number of stock, or they might ask you to calculate uh, the closing stock. And remember, whatever final answer you get in your calculation, you will also use that final figure in your actual financial statement. For example, the final figure for inventory, if you were asked to calculate the, uh, the closing stock for inventory. Fixed assets as well, as you know, inventory and fixed assets are asked both in paper one and in paper two. Uh, when it comes to fixed assets, they might ask to calculate depreciation, accumulated depreciation, asset disposal, etc. Whatever figure you calculate at the beginning, to get that figure, you will then transpose as is onto your financial uh, statement. Everything required are asked from you in the question. 
Now when I'm going to go deeper into this pattern of comprehensive income, I will give you general tips here. First of all, you need to know your concepts. Concepts are very, very important because those are those easy marks you can score in the exam to ensure that you are getting to your pass mark for the paper or getting to the level that you desire. Also, very, very important, you need to study and know the format of the paper because if you do not know the format, you will then place information on the incorrect side when it comes to the statement of comprehensive income. Yeah? Adjustments will always be required for the financial statement of uh, the statement of comprehensive income. So you need to make sure that you practice at home. Practice on previous question papers. Ensure that you use your pre-adjusted figures. You then use the information in the adjustment to get to the final figure at the end that must go into the statement of comprehensive income. Also, those adjustments are important. Do show them in brackets. For example, if you are asked to do the rent income adjustment, ensure that you use the pre-adjusted figure, then you calculate the actual adjustment figure, you add them together or subtract them to get the final figure at the end. By using the pre-adjusted figure, you are basically guaranteeing in a sense for you to get a better mark. Okay? Also, balancing figures uh, are also being asked in the actual um, question paper where they are giving you, for example, an uh, open space under interest income. Under interest income, for example, it might be a balancing figure question mark. Then you will have to calculate from the top down and from the bottom up for you to get that balancing figure, okay, in order for you to complete the entire question uh, when it comes to the statement of comprehensive income. Also, some adjustments, some of them, is also needed for the statement of financial position. For example, like I said with the rent income, if you are going to be increasing the rent income, you know that there is still money being owed to the business, which we call normally accrued income. And you know that accrued income must also be transferred as a positive figure into the statement of financial position. Some financial indicators are also needed to calculate unknown figures. Like I said earlier on, for example, if you are asked, if you are given rather the current um, the current pay bill, then either the current assets will be completed by you from the information or the current assets, then you must then be able to use that ratio, the final answer, to calculate either the current assets or the current liability. And then using that, you are also able to determine balancing figures, for example, such as cash and cash equivalent. Very important grade 12s, as I've put here a note for you, that when it comes to uh, these adjustments, we use normally the method called the WH method or White House method, meaning the W stands for what do we want. The want is what you're trying to calculate with the adjustment. And what you have tends to be the figure in the adjustment or the trial balance figure. Make sure you use that calculation throughout when it comes to you doing your adjustments. Also, if you require, for example, the net profit after tax and you are given the income tax as a percentage of 30%, then you will then use 70 at the top, which is what you want. How do I get the 70? It is going to be the 100, which is the net profit before tax, minus the 30, which is the income tax, which will then ultimately give you the 70 that you are looking for, which is what you want. And what you have, you were given the 30%, which is the percentage of the income tax, which is the one you put at the bottom of the fraction. Obviously, you will then use, for example, maybe the income tax amount, because whatever is at the bottom, what you have, you will use that amount that is given to you in the adjustment or in the actual statement of comprehensive income for you to be able to complete the calculation to get the final answer for the net profit after tax as an example. Okay? Then also now we move on to the second financial statement in question one, which is the statement of fin uh, financial position. This is again, like I said with the previous one, know your concepts. You must know what is an asset. You must know the different types of assets you get, whether they are non-current or current. Know the format of your 
taking a financial position. Also, the adjustments will be required as well throughout the question. Balancing through the topic, the same effort for taking a comprehensive income is required to complete the question. Also, grade 12, some adjustments, like I said, is needed from the statement of comprehensive income now. So whatever figure you have calculated, for example, in the statement of comprehensive income, especially under your incomes and expenses, you will transfer the figure that you added or subtracted, for example, on that adjustment, you will transfer it straight to the statement of financial position. Also, the same example as earlier on, you will use the what you want, what you have, for you to be able to get the figure that you need as an adjustment figure. Okay? Then we move on to the next part, the, the, the correction of net profit. Again, yeah, just like earlier on, know your concept, know your formula. That's a given. Okay? And the reason why we need to know our formula, especially we want to prevent the situations as well where you are losing marks in the exam. Marks meaning where they are giving you penalties negative marking for misplaced items as well as foreign items. They subtract marks when you put, for example, an income under expenses or you put or you put a, 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 an expense under an income. Please, that is why the format is so vital for you to know, for you to prevent any marks being lost for you. Remember one mark can result in you getting a what? A level one, or it can result in you getting a what? A level seven, for example or level six or level five, etc. You might even lose your distinction if you would lose a mark. So it's important for you to know your format to ensure that you are not giving anyone any opportunity to rob you of any marks. But you need to know your format to place the correct information on the correct section of the statement. Okay? Also, adjustments will be required, but with this question specifically, there will be a section there where it states, for example, extract B then it will give you the incorrect um, net profit before any adjustments are made. And they'll give you a list of adjustments. Normally, these adjustments will be incomes and expenses that you'll have to adjust to then put that figure at the end. Now, remember, they will be specific in the adjustments. They will say, for example, um, the following was not taken into account when the correction of net profit was calculated or when the net profit was calculated. And you have to make sure as the learner, as the candidate, that you ensure that you do the adjustment and then you must know what will be the flow, how will we be able to tackle that adjustment. Will it increase the net profit or will it decrease the net profit? Similar as before, you're going to use the method, the White House method, to calculate any figure that you need to adjust. And I used the same example as earlier on. But this is the very, very important part, grade 12. I need you to pay, pay attention here. When it comes to an income, for example, if we are so owed the income, we call that accrued income, right? However, in the adjustment on the normal statement of comprehensive income, we know that you add any income that we are owed, right? Meaning, in the correction of net profit, that figure will then be a positive figure that we will then have to add to the incorrect figure that was calculated before, okay? Because ultimately, if you are owed income, it means your profit must increase, okay? Also, if income is decreasing, for example, if we have income receiving advance or deferred income, that income is not for us yet because remember, we must match it to the financial year, okay? Therefore, that income is for the following year. So we can't actually bring it into account for this financial year because, as you know, the GAAP principle clearly tells us when it comes to the matching principle that you match incomes and expenses for the financial year that it relates to, okay? So therefore, you will subtract it normally in the statement of comprehensive income. Therefore, you will do the same in your actual correction of net profit. But the problem here is where I've noticed a lot of learners make mistakes are the following, the expenses. Remember, if an expense increases, what will it ultimately do to my net profit? It will reduce my profit, right? And if an expense is decreasing, what will happen? It will then increase my net profit. Now, let us talk about accrued expense, for example. When you look at accrued expenses, normally in your adjustments in the under the operating expenses, 
Ich, for example, I will use the example when I rent. If you have rented a place, you have to adjust it as bigger, right? Then you are so owed, you are so owing, sorry, rent for the last month of the financial year. You will add the rent amount in brackets and then get the final rent figure at the end after you've done the adjustment. Now, when we are adding the, 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 the accrual expense, that figure normally will then drop the net profit at the end in the statement of, of net income. That is why here in the correction of net profit, it will then be a minus in front of the figure or a bracket. Okay, if you don't put the signs, the negative signs, you will accept that the answer is positive. Even if the calculation was done correctly, you will forfeit the mark because the actual flow or effect you have not indicated in the actual question paper or answer sheet that you were asked to do. The same with the expenses if it is uh, decreasing. Remember, you will normally subtract it because it may be a prepaid expense. Therefore, the final expense tend to be uh, smaller. Therefore, when it comes to the expense and it is made smaller in the statement of comprehensive income, on the opposite side now, the actual profit will increase when you have less expenses, right? Therefore, in the correction of net profit, the same thing will happen now. We will then obviously put it as a positive, right? It will increase our net profit, okay? Tip on how to answer the notes to the financial statements as well. Again, like I said, concepts are important, formats. If the format is incorrect, you will lose marks. You will be negatively marked, okay? Adjustments also are required throughout the question when it comes to notes. You must know all your notes, okay? I know we normally just see the, o the, the OF, uh, OFC and the RI. OFC is the ordinary fair capital and the rebid income notes but there's no instruction that states you will never be asked the other notes. Therefore, make sure you know all of your notes, the financial statement, the formats, and how to calculate them. Again, some adjustments is needed from the extract. Also, like I said, we use the White House method for you to get your final figures that you need. Also, use, very important, the closing balance at the end of the note uh, as it is for your financial statement. Why? Because you need to score negative marks for that. If you use, even if it's incorrect, when you translate as it is to the financial statement, you will then score negative marks if I have that, okay? Then also, inventory is asked, also in the question at times. Concepts, methods, very important. Calculations are required throughout this specific question. For you to calculate the closing stock, you need to know the method. Use that method to determine the closing stock, the stock that is missing. As I was saying, the closing stock that is missing, or the, the closing stock or the missing stock, calculations are required when the final figure is used in the financial statement. Okay? Then the last one, the tips on answering the quick questions. This is again, as I said, know your concepts, know your methods. Calculations are required throughout the question. Calculations such as depreciation, accumulated depreciation, asset disposal, carrying value, etc. are required. And again, the final figure that you have are used throughout uh, the financial statement. Okay, so that is the overview when it comes to question one. And my final tip to you guys is the following. Please, please check that. I'm going to repeat this uh, all the time. Know your formats, please. You do not want any situation where you get negative marking, okay? Use the three adjusted figures in your calculations. Why? Because you need to score negative marks, even if your adjustment is what? Your adjustment is incorrect. You will get the negative marks at the end. Use final figures. Uh, in previous calculations, as is, again, to score negative marks in the actual question. That is my presentation for you guys on the statement of, sorry, on question one, the financial statement of the question.